good day and welcome to another mission on the project management learning journey. With this mission, we're going to focus on the first stage of the project, which is the concept stage. As you recall from this image, the first phase of the project is the discovery phase. And then the first stage of that phase is the concept stage, which conclude with the stage gate one that has to be approved before we go on. Now let's pause here for a second. And I'm going to tell you to stop the video in, in, in one minute. I want you to think about forming an opinion on where is the beginning of a project life cycle in your mind, in your word, in your company. What do you consider the beginning is? Is the beginning the idea of the project or maybe an approved idea? Or is it after conducting some kind of a feasibility study and management authorizes the project to proceed? Now remember, these gate, each of these gates is kind of authorization. But again, the question here, is it more on the beginning or the end of this first phase? Obviously, what you can see here is that our view is that the project start with an idea. And the first thing we do is a concept stage. This is one approach that we believe in in SOCAD. And this is why we designed it as part of the camp methodological approach. However, an alternative view. And this alternative view that is often documented in ISO 21500 and the Pumba guide that is produced by the Project Management Institute, which says the following. This first phase of a project that I am calling a phase, they don't call it a phase, they call it pre-project. So basically what they are telling us is this early work is not part of the project life cycle. Let's be careful here. They're not saying it's not part of the project, but it's not part of the project life cycle. Now, what does that mean? Well, the assumption here or the understanding that is the project life cycle is managed by a project manager. So what PMI and ISO are telling us that part, the first part of the project, pre-authorization or what they use the term charter, pre-charter, it is not under the responsibility of the project manager and project management function within the organization. Now that's often true. We don't argue with that. Often project discovery phases are done by the business owner, maybe the end user, a function, a department, a strategic planning, whoever it is. Yeah. So Yes, project management, if there is a project management function within the organization or a project manager, they may not be accountable for that part. Although today there are a lot of debate and discussion on this, which we will discuss maybe in another time. So the SOCAD view is that obviously different than PMI and ISO. And what we say, and forgive me for reading here, we say even though an organizational unit other than project management might be leading the business case and feasibility, we still think at the phase of the project, it is part of the project life cycle. That's the view we have. And because it's a phase of the project, Therefore, it has to be managed like any other phase, which means it has to be managed following the steps that we discuss if it is a large project, such as the authorized plan, management plan detail, implement, and the rest of this stuff. Now, should it be managed by a project manager? We say yes. Basically, our view is that as soon as the idea is approved at stage gate one, the organization must appoint two people, project sponsor and a project manager. In the first quest, we discuss the different roles 
and what does this project sponsor or business owner mean or project owner and what's a project manager and the roles and responsibility for each of those people so please you can refer back to the previous quest uh, or uh, another quest that we have developed that under the name of starting the project management journey for information about that so in our view it's yes a project manager should manage this phase so what is the concept stage then as the concept stage in our word is that basically every venture start with an idea and we produce a document called the project brief which should be brief and action oriented It should describe the project idea, which means what, with the clear purpose, why, and how does it align to the strategic direction. And in our word, this is what we call the business case. Sometimes people debate in what is the source of the idea. Well, let's start maybe with a high level view. An organization that subscribe to strategic planning. So these are organizations who would develop and formulate a strategic plan and believe in the use of project and program management concept and principle to implement those strategic plan. The most ideas on organiza in organization should be identified from the strategic plan, goals, initiative, and program, and cascade down from a strategic initiative to a program and the program could be divided into sub projects or basically there could be some projects that are linked directly to the strategic plan. Alter alternatively, organization could have an idea management system to encourage their people, their staff to come up with creative ideas uh, to help improve the business. And as a, as a part of maybe an innovation program or an idea management system or whatever organization preferences are. So we say ideas should come from strategic plan, but they could come from the line from the staff. However, even when it comes from the staff, it has to align to an organizational strategic goal. So basically what we are saying is the following. The project brief should include a short description. And when we say short, we mean one or two sentences. Now, of course, you know, if you really feel the need to go further, go for it. But keep it brief, as brief as you can. Because remember, you are not designing the project or you're not going to go implement the project after this stage. You are just trying to clarify what this project is all about in order to get management to approve you at gate one, just to go to the next step. And then with gate two, you go to the next step. This is the intention of the stage gate process, to take it one step at a time. So this is why we say at this, at this stage, the project brief could be very, very, very brief. One or two sentences are satisfactory often enough, of course, if the organization accept these principles. So the short description should cover what will the project give you at the organization when it's complete. So think with the begin with the end in mind. Once you're done, when you are finished with your project, what would you give your management and the organization? Are you going to give them a building, a software, a study, um, whatever it is? So focus on the output, the output that you are going to produce. Then the next part of the project brief should be why are you doing this project what are the justification or business need what's the triggering this project why do you think it should be done again it could be one or two sentences no more the third sentence is about strategic alignment as i mentioned on the previous slide obviously if the project comes from strategic plan then it's a given but if the project come from the line or from a senior manager or anybody within the organization then we need to put that project to the test. Does the project align to the strategic plan of the organization? Ideally, we want it to be linked to a specific goal in the strategic plan or a specific imperative or initiative 
that is, has been identified in the organization. That's it. That's the project brief. Yeah. Let me give you some examples and that can help you visualize how can even with one sentence, you can start control on your project. So project control start with the approval of gate one. And how can this one single sentence or two or three can set it the project and define the project for us to start at a high level control. Again, you feel free to pause the video after what I'm finished with explaining this bullet. Pause it and go write down your answers. And then once you're comfortable with what you wrote, come back and click again. And then you will need to pause again and write some more and then pause again and write some more. So let's take it step by step. If your project in your organization is to help improve employee health. So the objective is you need a project to help improve employee health in the organization. Let's make it specific and say within the location where you are at. So assuming you might have a global organization with multiple offices, let's just focus only on where, where you work, the, the location that you are in. What will your project scope of work include? Time to pause. Again, if you were not clear, and you might need to pause again, what will your project scope of work include? What does it mean is that what are the things that you will do in the project to deliver to that objective? The objective is to improve employee health. So what are the different things that you have to do to produce, to meet that objective? Again, if you want to go back and update what you wrote, please do. And again, feel free to share them on the community. And I will be happy to uh, review those things and give you feedbacks. The next step. Let's say management, instead of telling you improve employee health, notice it's just one sentence. And they tell you your project is to build a gym in the facility where you work. What will you produce or deliver? Again, take a few minutes to think about this and write down what is the scope of work, what is the work that you are going to do to deliver to that objective. Time to pause and write what you need to write. Next, I'm going to basically give you a twist on this and said your management actually told you or is asking you to improve employee health. So your project is to improve employee health and build a gym. How would this project be different from one or two? Okay, time to pause and write down your answer. Okay, assume you have done that. So now let's take it to the next level. I don't know if you have a project in mind. And remember, this is not a how to manage a project quest. We will do that in the future. But in the meantime, if you like to practice this concept, why not? If you have a project in mind, okay, take a minute or two or five to write down what do you think the project brief would be so in this case remember the project brief should include what is the project which means what are you going to produce when you're done why are you doing it justification and of course how does it align to the strategic aspect of the organization of course if it's a personal project maybe how does it relate to your personal mission statement if you have one after the project brief we go to stage gate one and stage gate one has to be submitted to management and whoever sit at the gate, as we discussed earlier, this could vary, depend on the size and complexity of the project and the organizational policies and guidelines. And management have to decide whether to accept or reject the idea. If accepted, then they need to consider another question. Should they pursue it? 
And of course, if they want to pursue it, because they could, I mean, could be accepted the idea, but they still decide, look, maybe we don't have the time for this now. But if they are, if they decide to pursue it, uh, would it require a feasibility study? And we think, yes, in most cases, there should be a feasibility study, even could be a brief or abbreviated feasibility study. But every project must have a feasibility study. So management will be evaluating the idea based on the strategic alignments and other factor to accept the project. And if the project is approved, we can say thank you. But keep in mind, only the idea is approved. And the project still could be canceled at any point in time at any one of those feature gate. So basically approving the project at gate one all what it means that management is authorizing the project manager to go to the next stage and develop a feasibility study. Until the next mission, we wish you success today and always.